So today's project's a little different from normal. It's not an engine, it's a chrome shaft. So I do a lot of these shafts for customers. They get wore out. This is for a hydraulic cylinder. You'll see this pitting, that's from water. It starts to corrode. And you get this pitting like this. It's just everywhere. And sometimes they're, it's actually more expensive to get them re-chromed than it is to just uh, make a new one. Also some scuffing here, you can see this is a common wear spot and then it stops. And so this probably spends most of its time up at the top. And it's a, it's a lot of wear going on here, but not so much here because this is the inside of the cylinder, so. One of the processes I do is I get a whole, I've got lots of bar stock of this, and then I, I just cut all of this new. And then uh, when it's a common one like this, like these, I've got a lot of these in stock, but this one's a little different, different eye size. So I cut this off, reuse the clevis and put it on the new one. So the blade that I use to uh, cut this one is kind of a secret because it cost me a lot to get figured out. <clears throat> but I have these blades specially made for me to be able to cut welds. And I usually get about 30 clevises cut off per blade until the garbage. But it ain't cheap. It costs about just shy of $300 a blade. So. And then here I'm measuring the new chrome shaft. It's uh, 47 and an eighth inch long. <clears throat> so I buy this chrome shaft in 24 foot lengths and I cut it to the size that I need and, and away I go. This is my lathe, and uh, it's got a 10-foot bed, 26-inch swing, 200-pound chuck. I've got a digital readout on it. Sometime I'll have to give you a tour of it, but for now I'll just be uh, showing you the process of this uh, machine, um, machining the shaft. So it's an Acro lathe. I've really liked it so far. I've had it for about five years now and it's it's really holding the tolerance as well so highly recommend Acra it's a Taiwan brand and with this chrome I don't uh, tighten it down super hard you don't want to mar up the chrome so don't put a cheater bar on your key but you also want it to be snug so that it doesn't slip because if it slips then you've just ruined this shaft and this stuff ain't cheap it's not mild steel
first step of the process to, is to face the end. So this is just a facing slash chamfering tool. And I've got a quick attach tool holder. It's pretty great. So now I've already I've got got it set up with my roughing tool. And this just cuts most of the material off. My buddy makes fun of me because I only take a fifty thousandths pass with it when he, he takes quarter inches at a time. But what I found with the chrome is especially at the very beginning it's hard. And since you can't clamp down well, you want to take small passes so that you're not going to mar up the chrome shaft. It's not that I've learned that the hard way. But, yeah, I the first pass I take a very small cut, get rid of that hard chrome, and then after that I take 50 thousandths passes just to make sure that nothing slips.
So right now I'm doing a test cut with my finishing tool. And this just this is just so I can measure it to make sure. I've got a digital readout with um, with tool presets. That's a new all digital readout. Really like it. And and so then I'm gonna get my micrometer, check it, make sure that it's on, and if there's any changes to the tooling, I can just put that in the digital readout. But in this case, I measure it. It was dead on. And so I knew my measuring tool was ready. Uh, my tool sets were good. And so then I continued doing the rest of the finishing passes. On my uh, finishing passes, I take about 10,000 cuts. That's what I found with the tool likes. Any more than that starts to get a little bit of a wave of chatter, especially with a only one inch thick here. And so 10,000s, it likes it, makes a nice mirror finish. So I've already got my tool switch, but I put in a grooving tool. And so the first groove that I'm going to cut is for an O-ring. So when you put the piston onto this rod, it's got a place for the uh, piston to seal onto. And the second one is the thread relief <coughs> sorry thread relief groove and when when I do the single point threading that I will get to in a bit it's a place for my tool to stop so that I don't just destroy everything so I just got my threading tool set up I'm gonna zero it out take my first pass Here I um, thread on a nut 
this is a one inch 14 thread so I threaded it on felt that it was a little bit tight don't want that so I'm gonna do one more pass one of the questions I get a lot is what coolant do you use for threads I just run it dry I've tried motor oil ATF actual cutting fluid it really doesn't make a difference from what I can tell so I just run it dry so I've got a good fit and now I'm gonna do the finishing chamfers on everything and make it look pretty And that's it. Thanks for watching. I do a lot of these shafts and they're they're kind of fun. See you next time.